Alright, hey, welcome back to the Midday q and I'm your host, the Duck Man, and this is... B. McQueen. And I want to show you something really cool. Yeah? Push that button right there on the top. What the hell just happened? Push it again. And again. <laughs> Have you ever seen anything like that before? Nope. Well, don't wear my door out now. <laughs> Well, what we've got here is something I've been working on. Some commenters said that after they saw me do the Arduino subs counter that I created, that they wanted to see more of the Arduino stuff. So, I created a garage door opener. And what this actually is, is kind of the sequel to a video that I never finished editing from almost 10 years ago. I've still got that video, and we're going to show a little bit of it here. But what I had done is, uh, well, we're always losing, my ex and I, we're always losing our garage door opener remotes. And I'm sure if you ever had a garage door opener, you know, you lose a damn thing and you don't have it in your car and you switch from one car to the next and it sucks. Can't relate. Right, but what's one thing you always have? Well, you always have your phone. In this case, it's a tablet, but it's Duckman sized phone, quite obviously. Well, I chose to set up my system so that way I could connect to the Wi-Fi and if your phone is immediately in proximity, by the time you pull it out of your pocket, it's already connected. So click one button, which links you to the secured app that's on the phone and if you get this has, does have a password on it but we would save it in your browser and then just hitting the button as soon as you get home and you can open your garage door now i have not limited it to just the garage door opener i decided to take one step a little bit further and i built it into a two relay system yes <laughs> the second relay is for the light so I can turn the light in the garage on and off. I don't even know why I bothered to do that other than to just test the technology to see if I can make it happen. And sure enough, I did. I think I'll share the source code to this one up on Patreon. If you'd like to see it, you can join my Patreon. And you too can build a garage door opener just like this. I'll share all the parts, all the different things that you can purchase to make this happen for you if you'd like to build one. And I'll give you a little demonstration as to how it all hooks up later in this video. But first, Please licky like and comment subscribe, pluck that dingle belly, and check out DuckShit.net for all of our different social media links. B has now an Instagram, an active YouTube, and a Patreon. You want to make sure that you join all of those things, so hit us up on DuckShit.net. You'll find links to all of her stuff, all of my stuff, some of this stuff, and all the other great things you can find from us up on our YouTube channels. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll be back right after the intro. It's really simple how it works. My Chamberlain garage door opener is here. And this little guy has um, just two wires feeding into it, a positive and a negative, and it produces 12 volts. And I tried to get my little Arduino to run off of the 12 volts, but it didn't provide enough current to, to get the Arduino to even boot up, so that wasn't an option. I had to set up a separate power supply, and this is actually just five volts coming in from an old cell phone adapter from a phone I used to have about 15 years ago. They didn't have a USB end on it, so I just cut it, plugged it together. But anyway, I have um, two switches in here, one for the light, which is this here, and then of course one for the garage door opener. So what I need to do is I needed to have two wires to each one of the switches, essentially two relays, and I needed a four pin plug to do it through, and a USB actually happens to have four wires in it. Now this is not the right use for a USB cable, oops. It's definitely not the right use for a USB cable, but it made for a nice, clean interface using parts that I already had. I have extra USB cables, and I have an extra USB port, and I put it in there so it looks all professional-like, so it's actually easy to plug in and take back out. I've checked to see if there are any voltages that run across that at all, so if somebody was a dumbass and decided to plug a cell phone into it, it would fry it, and uh, no, there was no voltages in there at all. In fact, I then tried to plug the cell phone in to see if it did anything, like open the garage door or something, and it actually did not. So no worries on that. But inside of this here is my Arduino. It's not even a real Arduino. It's a, it's a Node MCU. It's just an 8266 uh, ESP8266. Not much to it. Two little relays go off to it. And uh, really simple as they are, let's see here. We'll fire this sucker up. I'm going to unplug it temporarily just so it doesn't actually make the garage door open and close while I'm trying to demonstrate this here. Yeah, real simply put, you see those two red lights that are in there? 
That means both the relays have power, and there's a green light on either one of them that actuates when this thing comes up. So I just hit that, that's opening the door, and the green light on the other side when I turn the light on. So it's real simple how this works. It's just a web interface. I actually borrowed uh, some software that somebody else had developed, and I completely modified and rewrote it and borrowed nothing but the web interface in the end. And uh, turns out none of what they had written was what I needed. But yeah, this uh, this works pretty good. If you ever seen the floppy tron, I could probably make music with these things you know, if I really wanted to go nuts. <laughs> But it works out quite well. I'm very, very pleased with it. I plug this back into its interface here. It's really hard to do with one hand while I'm trying to look through a camera screen. There it goes. Oops. I already hit the button on it by that. Side. But yeah, activating the light. You see the light up there. Turns the light on and off, and of course, opens the garage door. Nothing to it at all. It actually works out real nice. Activate the door. Light apparently doesn't activate or deactivate unless the door is already effectively closed. Here it is. And back on. So that's kind of nice. If I get trapped here in the garage late at night and sometimes I flip the wrong wall switch the wrong way and I want to walk through here, I can use my phone to turn that light on because I can't find the switch sometimes. It is lit. So, I mean, it does count for something, but I'm very, very pleased with what I got. This is just fastened to the wall with some double-sided tape, nothing to it. And I don't even snap the cover on completely because it's really easy to get it back off in the event I need to modify it. If I want to update the software, I'll just pull this little board out, plug in the USB port on the side, and go from there. But uh, I am just over-pleased with this setup. It's so if you're interested in uh, how to build one of these for yourself, I'll release the source code up on my Patreon page. There'll also be a build list of what parts that you need on the Patreon page and also down below in the video description. There's really not much to building this thing at all. Uh, it's actually quite easy and it worked out quite well for me. Now you may have a garage door opener that only has one button. If you only have one button, you don't have some kind of smart switch like this Chamberlain, which I think uses shift registers or something in it. I actually soldered the wires down to where the switches are in this thing. This has, uh, I guess it's four switches on it, the light, the door, and some programming code buttons, which I didn't mess with. But um, if you just have a simple one button switch, all you need is one relay, and it really simplifies the code for those people that only have a, a single switch. But for me, no, nope, I decided to go one step further and do the light also. Didn't need it, <laughs> but I like it. All right, well, welcome back, everybody. We got some mail this week. Well, we only got one thing, and it's not really mail. We didn't get anything in the mailbox, however. This is B's new engine. And for those of you who've been asking, hey, when are you gonna start working on that Carmen Ghia? The answer is very, very soon. Now we've got an engine for it. And if we don't wind up using this engine, we'll certainly be using parts from that engine. And I think I got enough stuff to be able to put her together an engine for the Ghia. If not, you need to create a engine wish list. And maybe some of your Patreons will chip in, or maybe one will send you an engine. <laughs> Never know. <laughs> Would be nice to have a nice 1776, if you know what I mean. It's not for me, it's for B. Anyways, <laughs> what we've got right here is uh, an engine. I was told it's a 1600, but I'm looking at some of the parts on it, and things are just, the rockers don't match on each side. The head studs are actually in contact with the rockers. Somebody torqued it down and crushed them against each other. I don't know what the hell's happened to this engine, so I'm definitely going to have to go through it to figure out what's wrong with it. And as I said, if we don't wind up using it, we're going to definitely pull parts off to build something else. Gia is going to be started in the next few weeks. Um, we are going to... <laughs> she's all excited. We are going to be doing another floor pan, however, in the interim. Uh, I have a friend of mine who bought the White Beetle. You might know him over in Vocho Wagons. He's got another YouTube channel himself. Part of the plan, or part of the deal that I worked out with him, is that I was going to weld the pans into his Super Beetle. And, well, that's actually going to happen this coming week or two. Well, as soon as he gets it, the body off of it, that he's able to bring it to me. So, Gabriel, if you're watching this, that's right, or Gabriel, as you would say it, uh, make sure you get that thing together. And you guys check out Vocho Wagons. He is a um, Mexican born in America. He speaks Spanglish, for those of you that aren't familiar. And if you say, well, I don't want to watch a YouTube channel where they speak Spanish. It, you got to watch him. He's got a great sense of humor. He knows what he's talking about. And it's kind of neat that you see what he's, he's speaking and he's using words that you've never heard before. However, you still understand what he's talking about. If you're a gearhead, it's certainly easy. So check him out over there in Vocho Wagons. There's a link down below in the video description. And uh, give him a shout, give him a sub, and uh, tell him that B sent you over. How about that? How about it?
Are you excited to get the gear together? I'm excited. She's so excited. <laughs> we're going to be tearing that thing apart, like I said, in the next couple weeks, but we're going to get that Super Beetle out of the way first. I figure it's a good time for her to start learning how to do a floor pan before she does her own. This one's going to be completely exposed with the body off. We're going to do the gear with the body on. And only for one reason, because my YouTubers have challenged me. They said, can you do it with the body on? The answer is yes. It sucks, <laughs> but we can do it. So we're going to actually do them with the body on. It's going to be my first experience doing it that way myself. So we'll see what comes up and how difficult it's going to be for somebody of my size getting into a little Carmen Ghia sized car. But we'll have B here doing a lot of the work on that to squeeze her in there, put a respirator on there, and make sure all the smoke gets uh, <laughs> out of the car while she's working. Sound like fun? Sounds like a lot of fun. Sounds like a lot of fun. We're going to be tearing that up soon. All right, everybody, well, we're going to wrap this video up. So please, as always, licky, likey, comment, subscribe. Check out duckshit.net for all of our different social media links. You too can be a fan of B McQueen right up here on her Instagram as well as her Patreon page or her YouTube. Baby YouTube channel. How many YouTube videos you got up now? Uh, two for the public. Two for the public, and how many for Patreons? Maybe four. Four Patreon specific videos. That's right, you guys. If you want to see something special, check out over on Patreon. It's some of the stuff that she can't release to public otherwise. Yep, there might be something a little. Might be a couple of special things in those videos. So this is you. You might want to go check her out over on Patreon. As always, check out my YouTube and my Patreon just the same. I've got more than one YouTube channel. You can check me out up on DuckShit.net for all of our links, my links, her links, even links to Boomer the Duck if you want to see him. So thanks you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.